Thank you for tuning in. This is 101.5 KZKA FM, home of the Wolves, here at the Los Angeles Academy of Arts and Enterprise. This is an interview made by students for the Los Angeles community to showcase local artists, musicians, politicians, and local creatives. Please enjoy. Welcome to 101.5 KZKA FM. This is Kayana Williams. My name is Jesse Lopez. And we'll be interviewing. This is David Flores from Las Cafeteras. Good morning. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm good, Kayana. Really good to see you again. And Jesse, you too. Uh, it's good. It's a good morning. I'm really impressed at your campus. Uh, you got a really beautiful view of downtown LA. Did Thank you. Know you. People would pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> 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 well, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, all right. Well, my name's David uh, Jesus Flores. I was born in East Los, like in the City Terrace area. Um, I was baptized right there at San Lucia's. I'm one of six brothers and sisters. My mom has 14 brothers and sisters. Can you believe that? Uh, she's from Mexico. My dad's from Mexico. She's from Michoacan. My dad's from Sonora. And, but I also grew up in the San Gabriel Valley. It's a little more east from here. Um, I went to Rosary High School. Then I went to East LA Community College. Uh, from East LA Community College, I went to San Diego State University because I wanted to write Jack in the Box commercials. That's what I thought my dream was. Uh, but that didn't last long, and, and I majored in sociology. Uh, I did some traveling. I went to Mexico. I learned how to play a little bit of music. Uh, and then I played music with this group called Las Cafeteras um, that maybe you all know about. Um, but then I went to do my master's at Cal State Long Beach. Uh, I got my master's degree, and now I'm also a doctoral student at UCLA. Nice. That's dope. All right, so so that was kind of long? No, nah, that, that was perfect. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right, we're going to start with the first question. Uh, where did the name Las Cafeteras come from? Uh, so we come from a space. It's called the Eastside Cafe. That's the name of the, the cultural center, right, where we started to play music. And so the spot was called the Eastside Cafe. Mm -hmm. And so every time we would be playing music, people would be like, hey, there's the cafeteros. Right, like from the Eastside Cafe, um, so so we adopted that name Cafeteros, the Cafeteros, um, but we also wanted to embody the feminine, right? Every time, like you know, someone could walk in the room right now and said, "Hey, what's up, guys?" Even though there's women in the room, right? But if someone says, "Hey, what's up, guys?" They're also including the women, right? Um, we wanted to kind of challenge that, or we wanted to to like. Uh, kind of highlight the feminine part of all of us. So we, we all agreed to just call ourselves the feminine Las Cafeteras. Like sometimes when we go to interviews, um, they would expect a group of women uh, because that's just how, it's what we call gendered language. Uh, so we adopted the feminine name, Las mm. Cafeteras. Nice. What do you think, Jesse? Nah, that's, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. All actually. right. That's cool. All right, so how did you guys meet and like where did you guys grow up? So a lot of us, most of us are from, like, the greater L.A. area. Uh, you know, one of us is from Highland Park. And uh, me and my brother is also in the group. Uh, and so we were grew up in City Terrace, Frenchie, another one in the San Gabriel Valley. Um, one of them is from Oxnard. But we all met, like, right here in L.A. doing a lot of organizing work, doing a lot of real cool stuff like what you all are doing right now is um, – you know, building popular media, creating arts and stuff. And so when we were all at the Eastside Cafe, we were trying to do just really cool arts stuff, like playing music. And so that's kind of where we started. That's really cool. <laughs> um, what genre do you guys consider your music? And who are you guys trying to reach? Like in What genre? In the, like, the greater Los Angeles area or around the world or just your fans? Uh, what genre? Let me see. How do I explain? You all a little younger. Uh, uh, I mean, we kind of consider ourselves like alternative, uh, like Latin American, Afro Mexican stuff like traditional music because we it's traditional music like from the rancho, um, like Son Jarocho. The kind of music we play is from the rancho. But we kind of East L.A. funk it up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of hard to put it in, in, in a box because it's a lot of things. Yeah. 
Well, um, in your guys' music, the songs that we've heard in your songs, you guys use a lot of instruments. Can you guys like list some of them for our listeners? So, uh, because the music, right, is traditional music, uh, from the countryside, they play kind of these traditional instruments. They're guitar-like. They're not guitars, but they're like the cousins of guitars. Uh, the harana, six strings, the melodies, the requinto. And back in the days, they used the strings. You know, now the, nowadays, the strings of guitar, I don't know if anybody plays the guitar, um, you know, they're metal or nylon. Back in the days, the strings used to be of cat guts or like they, they used to make it with whatever they had. We actually play a donkey jawbone. Um, so it's a jawbone of a donkey after it's dry, it passed away and it's uh, dried. You know, you could play the donkey jawbone like an instrument. I don't have a picture over here, but um, so the, the instrumentation is very like traditional. We actually dance on a box. Uh, one of the percussions is just a box. It's called a cajon. So the instruments are very like, like you can make them in your backyard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You guys have done a lot of shows, right? We've done a few shows. We have. So, um, can you, where was the first place you guys like played live? Did you guys like play like? Uh, you know, because we, we like never thought we would be doing this, right? We just started playing music in in this cultural center at the Eastside Cafe. Like, imagine you all right now, you're like interviewing somebody. Like, maybe one day you're gonna be on the radio, like interviewing, uh, who's a famous artist right now? Um, anyone. Anyone, <laughs> give me a name, <laughs> uh, anybody. Uh, Beyonce. Beyonce, I mean, you That'd could be interviewing be Beyonce, right? Like, but it's also, it's out, it's like so far out there, you don't really imagine one day you're gonna be uh, interviewing Beyonce. That's kind of like how we were, you know. Uh, we just started playing, doing like, like, like this, right? We were doing just playing in people's backyards, and uh, we would just play wherever, whenever, and and eventually, like, bigger names asked us to play with them, bigger venues asked us to play, and it just kind of went up and up and up from there, um, until like. Until now, where like the band is in New Zealand right now, um, so so now we're doing a lot of really cool stuff and playing with a lot of really cool people that you all are familiar with. We haven't played with Beyonce yet, uh, but but a lot of really cool folks. That's that's cool. Um, you know, like how long have you guys been a band? Like, uh, you know, how long have you been? How old are you? I'm 15. 15. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, maybe maybe we started playing in like 2006. So when were you born? 2004. 2004. We started like when you were two years old. Damn. And, but, 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 like, we didn't start, like, for myself, I didn't start playing music. Like, I didn't never picked up an instrument until I was 20, uh, like 22 or 23 years old. Damn. So, if you imagine you started playing music right now, or like what you're doing right now, interviewing people, like you're gonna get to Beyonce in no time, as long as you just keep on going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, that's cool. So ten years or so, or or, or twelve? No, two thousand six, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, like thirteen years. That's a, long, that's a very long time. Yeah, Crazy. that's what they say. The hardest thing about a band is staying together. Like if you can stay together, you're going places. That's. Because most fans break up. Nah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, like, um, like, what made you decide to, like, make music? Like, like who kind of inspired you to do all that? Uh, okay, well, uh, do you all know Rage Against the Machine? Only it's one or two people here, right? Nobody knows Rage Against the Machine, huh? I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, like, you know how there's always musicians that, like, they're like, especially for our time when there's a lot of stuff happening in the world, right? There's a lot of like crazy things happening in the world. Um, we, we looked at like Islos, right? Where a lot of us are from. And a lot of people always think so many bad things about Islos, right? Or, or like, what are, where are we in downtown? Is yeah. Is considered downtown? Yeah. Or what? Yeah. Like Westlake area, same thing, right? Like, imagine what people think about Westlake. 
right? Same with East Los. There's a lot of cholos. There's a lot of homeless. There's a lot of gangs. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of this and that, right? Like people would always say the negative things about like my community or our community in our case, East, East LA, um, that maybe they, a lot of them say the same thing about Westlake. So instead of like, but where did they hear all, where did they all hear those messages from? From like movies, from like other songs, you know, from uh, the news. So we wanted to write our own story. We wanted to, we wanted to be the ones to write about our community because we live there, right? Are there cholos and violence and gangs in East LA? Of course, but there's much more than that, right? The, have you ever had the tacos in East LA or the bomb, right? Like yeah. the culture, the art, the murals, the like, the diversity, the like, the, you know, like, there's just so many beautiful things about our community that people weren't talking about. So that's, that's really what we wanted to do. Wow. That's a lot. Like, yeah. Like and, yeah, and so if you see our video, La Bamba Rebelde, right? Like our, it's like our biggest video. It has like over a million views, and w which is not a lot in the YouTube <laughs> world, right? It's not, it's not that much. But like we, we wanted to share a, do a different side of East LA that like we have people from like Finland saying, hey, orale, you know, I want to go to East Los. Or like, you know, we have people from all over the world learning about East LA, about our community from people that actually live there. Um, so to us, that's a big deal, right? That to kind of switch the way people are talking about, you know, our hoods. Wow. A lot of fake news there. Hey, hey <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, like, why do you guys sing in English and Spanish? Like, that's really interesting. Uh, why? Because we talk in English and Spanish. So it, w our music is really just a f reflection of, of who we are, you know, like, uh, we are bilingual, you know, and we are multicultural, uh, you know, we are, we are from Mexico and we're from the United States, you know, we call ourselves Chicanos. Um, so, so we are both, right? Like, because that really to us, like our language is in English and Spanish. It's not in English. It, to us, it's not only in Spanish. I, I don't speak Spanish super well, um, but to us, our language is, o sea, like uh, English and Spanish, you know what I mean? That is our language. It's not really, we don't consider it like we're only talking one or the other. We, our language is both. Yeah, because not many artists use that a lot. It's right. not really portrayed in like songs that much. Uh -huh. um, what are your views, because we touched this earlier, what are you views on Latinos um, portrayed in the media and how does that like affect your content and your lyrics? Yeah, like, like I mentioned before, you know, uh, there's Latinos, you know, when you say immigrant, for example, um, what do you think of? You immediately think of the southern border, right? But yeah. immigrants come from all over the world, right? And immigrants come from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, right? Like immigrants are, are everyone, right? But when we think of immigrant, what's immediately in our imagination? right? Mexicans, Central Americans, mostly. Um, so, so there's a lot of misperception about what an immigrant is, number one. Number two, that immigrants are bad, right? Um, like that, that narrative that immigrants um, are just kind of like coming to the U.S. and taking all these resources and stuff, like it's just totally not true. Um, so we also wanted to uh, give another uh, another story, another narrative of the immigrant experience that we are a part of, right? All of our parents were born uh, in, in another country, Mexico particularly, um, but we wanted to share stories about the immigrant narrative as well. Yeah, because I heard a lot of stuff like on the news and stuff about that stuff too, but your music is more inspirational, like your song, If I Was President, like, what was the inspiration for that song? Because when I listen to it, there's like a lot of um, news about what's going on yeah. and what you guys feel like about the president and what he's doing and what if. So what, what, what was the inspiration for that song? Uh, well, we wrote, I was, if I was president, it's also a very traditional song. So like um, when, I, when I talk about it being a song from the countryside, a traditional song, that song is over 500 years old. Um, but again, we gave it a little East LA twist. Uh, 
throughout all, like all of us right we can look to the president and say what we are against we can look in our communities and say what we are against we can oh we can talk all day long about what we're against um but we wrote that song because we wanted to start conversations about what are you for you know like what do you want how can you imagine a world w that you want to live in right and like even you think about this school right how are how can you imagine the type of school that you want to go to and so that's what we encourage you if you were president what would you do easy to easy to make fun of other people and criticize them uh harder to put yourself in their position to try to imagine a different world nice. that's why we wrote it <laughs> with that so like when did you realize like making music something you want to do full time uh, like I, I, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, when did we know? When did I know I wanted to mu music full time? I didn't know, you know. Like, we just kind of started playing, and we just kept playing, and you know, there came a time where, you know, if you had to work, but you know. Jay Z is asking you to do a concert for him. What are you gonna do? You know, like you event. There comes a point where you eventually make a decision that, like, I want to do this. You get, you don't get paid. No, you get paid nothing, right? It's very low pay. You travel a lot, which sounds cool, but you're sleeping on floors all the time. Like you're, you know, you're not eating healthy. You don't get a lot of exercise. Imagine you're with these same people in this classroom for two months straight like straight like you sleep together you eat together you you travel together like you get really annoyed at each other right like that's what it that's what that life is it's not something you do unless you love doing it because it's not it's not not everybody's at the level of jay-z and beyonce where they can you know take private jets and stuff this is really hard work you know you think about all the news people, all the radio people, they got to get up at three in the morning, four in the morning every day to go start that morning radio. You know, it's hard work. It's not easy. And um, like what kind of like music would you listen to, you know, like when you were growing up? Like, uh, You know, my dad, you know, I never. My, my dad was medio veterano, medio cholo, you know, like. <laughs> Like, he was, a, he was a straight veterano, but, like, not super. He was just, like, an old school type of guy. Kind of guy. And in and, and lugar de listening to, like, rancheras and stuff, he would listen to oldies. And so he was that kind of lowrider oldies guy. So we grew up listening to, to, to as me and my brother, um, grow up listening to a lot of oldies and stuff. And so we're, we're starting to write some um, oldies in our music as well. Um, and my mom would listen to, you know, Gloria Stefan and, 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 and Juanga and all, you know, all the traditional things a lot of our parents uh, listen to. But when I was growing up, too, you know, you don't know Rage Against the Machine, which is you all better look, look up Rage. Uh, but, you know, it was very diverse. I listened to a lot of hip hop, you know, the old school hip hop and things. And so just a traditional 80s, 90s baby. Who's your favorite or all of them? Who's my favorite? I mean, you got to listen to Rage. <laughs> you know, Rage Against the Machine. Uh, that's that's who I immediately pops up into my head. But, you know, like Mano Chao. How about Mano Chao? You all know Mano Chao? No, huh? Nothing? <laughs> oh, I know. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, that shows the different generations, right? Because there's a lot of generations in music, like That's 90s, right. 70s. Right. All music's so different. Yeah, you go to it. Spotify and just hit 90s. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, what year were you all born? 2004. 2000, 2003 and 4? Huh. I was graduating high school. <laughs> no, I was at community college. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, what are like the disadvantages and advantages of growing up Latin Latino in, um, in your community, and how did it affect your art? Uh, there's to me there's no disadvantage of growing up Latino we have we have challenges of course um, 
we live in a society that doesn't respect us as much or see us as equals. Um, but I wouldn't trade that for anything, you know, like to me, the, the, the benefits, uh, the pride, the joy of being a Latino, uh, of being Mexican, of being Chicano far outweighs, uh, the challenges, you know, and, and we indeed do have challenges, but that's really what makes good art. There's no good art. Um, that that doesn't come from from challenges, you know, and so um, Yeah, we do indeed have Issues um, but those issues are something that We can change Yeah, because there's all the issues like now in LA and different places about Latinas or Latinos and yeah. areas and stuff um, And, and that's that's what's cool like yeah there's also so much good stuff. Like, there's there's so much we hear about all the bad things. You know what I mean? We hear about the the negative the negative situation in Latinos, but there's also amazing, amazing, like, uh, there's amazing history of Latinos. There's amazing history of like the collaboration of Black and Brown folks. There's amazing history of like uh, music um, that and the role of music and all of this. So it's just stuff that needs to be dug out. You know what I mean? It's all there. Like, um, how did it feel like going, like, leaving, like, L.A. to play somewhere else, like, in other cities, you know? Oh. Uh, like, how was that? It's just crazy. Like. Like, what? Like what's like, the difference, like, like, the atmosphere of, like, the people? Like, 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 like we're in a bubble in L.A. Like, in L.A., you can see... Like, I, I don't know how you all identify uh, as far as Latinos, but here, like, there's majority Mexicans and Central Americans, right? We have black folks that live in South LA, white folks live in West LA. Um, but here where we live, like, there's so many brown folks. There's so many people of color. If you leave LA, it's a whole nother story. Like, it's hard, it, you know, the, the, the people of color are far and few between, so like, we're singing in Spanish to, to, to folks that have never really seen brown people, you know? Like, so it's, it's strange, but it's important because the reason, like, to me, what I think the reason why a lot of white folks, um, you know, like, like have a hard time understanding the immigrant experience, understanding, like, Black Lives Matter, understanding, like, the situation of other people of color is because they don't know any. Right. So all they all they know is things that they see on TV or the movies. Right. So it's a really dope opportunity for us to go to them and be like, look, you know, like we, we want to be the bridge. Right. For them to at least get to know uh, other people of color, folks outside of the, the, the white world. And I think we're really cool people like we're, we're like uh, we're really cool people. Um, and so I think that's also an important part is other people, other parts of the world need to understand uh, the experiences of people of color, uh, un to understand the L.A. experience. So that's something that we're able to do, I hope. It's a show. Yeah, I hope. I hope we show. Uh, you know, is, is it is it work? Let's see how they vote next time, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like what's uh, what's. Like, what's your guys' greatest achievement as a band or, like, yourself, like, personally? Say that again? Like, what's your guys' greatest achievements, like? Greatest achievement? That we're still together. <laughs> like. It's hard. It's hard to be in a band. Uh, it's really, really hard. And, like, I'm, seri I'm serious. Imagine you traveling with all of this class for months at a time. Like, you see all these people more than your own families. And, and, and you know, you all may have different diets. You all may have different bathroom routines. You all may have whatever, right? And imagine like you have to move together, right? It's really hard. And I think so. Our, I think our biggest achievement is that we are together after 12 years. I mean, besides your parents, what relationship do you have that's for 12 years? You know what I mean? Like that's a, it's a really challenging thing. Um, not only that, like we play music from, um, from a particular part in Mexico, Southern Veracruz. And a lot of people didn't like that we were playing that music. A lot of people didn't like that we were changing lyrics. A lot of people didn't like that, like us being born here, that we have no right to play that music. 
Um, so we, we've also gone through a lot of challenges throughout our uh, career. But all that stuff eventually just makes us uh, more determined in what we want to do. Yeah. Um, as a, a musician, what are your weaknesses and strengths? One of my biggest weaknesses is that I started playing music at 22. And so, <laughs> so you know, the music is a, is a language, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an art. And, you know, I, there's people that play music much, much, like right now, I'm in the doctoral program, so I, I don't travel with the group. Mm -hmm. um, there's somebody that plays in, in my place, and he's bad, mm -hmm. like bad as in good. He's amazing. He's in amazing. And so they don't miss me. <laughs> you know, like they're having a good time without me because this dude is like, he's amazing. Uh, and so that's that's one of my weaknesses, my act, you, my art, uh, needing to improve my skills. Um, what was the, the other part? What's our strength? Yeah, your strengths. I think our strengths is that we, we want to uh, we want to imagine another world. And, and there's no way to work towards another world, a better world if you can't imagine it, right? So so we are storytellers and we are dreamers. And so we really think that you have to dream about the world that you want in order to actually do that work. And that's, to us, that's like what artists can do. They imagine the world. And uh, for a lot of us, our job is to make that world happen. Um, so I think that's one of our strengths is we, we really believe that there's a better way to, to live. Um, together because mm -hmm. we don't have a choice <laughs> we gotta live together you know what i'm saying well so as you said you guys have been like a, a band for a really long time mm -hmm. you guys you guys know each other by like really a personal level yeah um who do you guys consider the founder of the band like who said like hey let's make a band you get this and that and let's go play uh you know there was a that uh, also happened very organically like we we never thought we would be like this we never imagined we would be a touring band. We wouldn't. We never imagined like we would get income from doing what we do. It all just kind of happened really naturally. Um, there was, of course, there was a few people that started that process, um, but we all consider ourselves founders of the group. Like all six of us are the founders of Las Cafeteras. Nobody is the lead. We are all equal. Like, so if someone gets, if any one of us gets a dollar for the band, we split that uh, six ways. That's crazy. Evenly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's crazy. That's a whole nother pedo, <laughs> but it's for another podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, did your parents support you? Like, when you told them that you're going to be a, mu like a musician? Uh, you know, they don't support you when you're not getting paid and you're struggling and you need to ask them for money but they love it when you're playing at the hollywood bowl you know and they want to they, they you know they want they want to tell everybody that you know how proud they are of you you know um they care so much about us that's why they want us to like be financially good um and but they're all at the same time they're super proud that like someone is paying us to go to australia and new zealand right now you know what I mean? That they're they're over there with kangaroos and koalas, so they're also that also makes them very proud on another level. Um, but it's not easy. They also care about our financial success and our future, obviously, because there's no health care <laughs> in uh, playing music. You know what I'm saying? That's for another podcast. <laughs> did your dad support you? Like, yeah, you my you know my dad loved it. My dad, you know, he was a uh, he 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 loved going to our shows and being there for sure yeah my mom también. however right you know when, when we can't buy dinner all the time is another on that you know like no, that's cool you got to understand you know where your parents are coming from you know what i mean they care about you, you know? um you know is there anything else that you wanted to like like wanted to do instead of performing arts yeah I, I'm, 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 me particularly, I'm kind of stepping away from the group um, because I'm a doctoral student, you know, I'm, I'm going to get my, I'm, I'm at UCLA right now getting my PhD, so I don't like the travel, 
I don't like being away from home for months at a time. Uh, you know, I have a kid now. Uh, and so, you know, all that stuff is really hard and taxing. And again, if you don't love, love, love that, um, then it's not easy. And so I loved it, but I didn't love, love, love <laughs> it. Um, so, you know, I, I'm also looking and, and that's why I wanted to, to support the work that we do in a different capacity and, and through my research, through um, my writing and other things like that. So when, when we write the Las Cafeteras movie, uh, you know, <laughs> I want to be ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Um, well, since you've been a musician for a long time and you've been doing it since you're really young. Not that young. Sorry. Anyway, um, what advice do you have for any up and coming artists or music or musicians out there that are listening in? Uh, what advice? One is to keep on going, right? Keep doing what you're doing. Don't you to not do it for that paycheck. If you love what you're doing, that that stuff will come. But two is like not just for musicians and not just for artists is be good to people. Um, like for whatever you're going to do is you got to be good to people because ultimately it's, it's the people that you're good to that are going to want you around. Like, you know, if I'm, if you're good to somebody at, at a venue and they need somebody, who are they going to think of? Uh, you know, I'm going to call Kayana or Jesse, Jesse, you know, because I like them. I remember them. You know, somebody call them and bring them over here. You know, ultimately, to me, it's building relationships and being good to people. Um, that is just as important as as you, as your art, I think. Thank you for being here again, for letting us interview you. Um, I'm Kayana. I'm Jesse. I'm David. And this is and thank you for listening to 101.5 KZKA FM.